let's have a look at question two. So suppose the probability of failing equals to one over two. And now we have this professor that can forecast whether or not we're gonna graduate in economics. Show using algebra that we're not willing to pay one million for this advice. Okay, so we have to compare two cases when we pay for the advice and when we don't pay for the advice. So let's do it. So we'll write it here below. We have the expected utility from not paying for advice. So expected utility without advice. We know that there is a probability of one over two that we are going to fail. And if we fail, we'll have an income of two was here. The income would be two if we fail in economics. But the utility is our income to the power of two. So the expected utility would be two squared plus one over two, the probability that we succeed times the income that if we succeed in economics, we would have eight, but the expected utility would be eight squared. So that would give us four over two, which is two plus 64 over two, which is 32 and expected utility of 34. Now let's compare this to the expected utility of paying for the advice. So the expected utility for paying the advice would be the following one over two, the probability of failing times. And now this is the key. What's going to be the expected income if we know for sure that we fail? Well, if we know that we fail, we can avoid that because that's why we're paying. We are paying advice to know for sure what to do. So we pay for advice to know for sure what to do. And in this case, in this case, if we know that we're going to fail in economics, what's a better option? Just being jobless, uh, I mean, without a degree or going for sociology where we have a certain outcome of four. Well, obviously four is better than two. So if we fail in economics, if we know that we're going to fail in economics, then we should go for sociology. So in that case, our expected income is going to be from sociology because this is going to affect our decision if we fail in economics and we have the advice telling us. So that would be an expected income of four, but we pay for the advice and we pay for it 1 million. So we subtract from it. That would be the final payoff after paying for the advice and after knowing what to do. And the expected utility would be the income left to the power of two. Now let's finish it off in this color plus one over two, which is the probability of that we're succeeding in economics. So th there is the chance that we're going to succeed. There is the chance that this professor is going to tell us that we're going to succeed. So we would make our 8 million, but then we'd again pay our million for the advice. So we're left with 8 minus 1. And the expected utility from it would be also to the power of 2. So that would equal to 1 over 2 times 3 to the power of 2, which is 1 over 2 times 9, plus 1 over 2 times 8 minus 1, which is 7 to the power of 2, and that's 49. So 9 over 2, that's 4.5. 49 over 2, that's 24.5. If we add them up, that would be 29. However, if we still compare it, advice versus no advice, we can see that 34 is better than, than 29. So we would not pay for advice. So not pay advice. Now, with this example in mind, let's have a look at the last question because we can answer it intuitively in question three. Generally argue whether a risk loving person is ever willing to pay for advice. Now we can see that in this case, the utility function is M to the power of two and that that corresponds to a convex shape, right? If we would draw, if we would draw the utility and the income m to the power of 2 means a parabolic shape. So we would have a convex shape upwards. And that corresponds to a risk loving person. We know that this function corresponds to a risk loving person. Risk loving. And what's the intuition of risk loving person? The idea is that if we, inc if we increase our income slightly, we increase our utility by more than that. So our utility increases by a lot if we have just a bit more money. So we're willing to take risks to increase our money. We're willing to uh, try and be an economist, even though it's hard and we might uh, fail at it. That's the intuition behind the risk loving behavior. And we can see in this example that, that even though, 
even though we would be able to pay for advice we would still we would still go for not paying for the advice and that's the math proving it that's this example that but the intuition in common sense what we're trying to show is that if we're risk seeking then we are disregarding advice if we're risk seeking we're willing to take that chance instead of having this certain outcome so if we are risk seeking we are not willing to listen to advice uh, we are not willing to listen to advice hope this makes sense and we are done